doing something kind of different. Um, usually I just do reviews and stuff, but now I'm going to start introducing this new segment uh, called Lolita Problems, where I'm just going to be talking about different issues that I've had as a Lolita or things that other Lolitas might have problems with. Kind of just be more of like discussion-ish. Just me, my camera, then you watch me talk to my camera on YouTube, and then you're like, yeah, you resonate with it. <laughs> anyway, that's the idea. So, um, I'm also going to be just talking about like how, like what Lolita is, with the different sub-styles, um, where to, well, I kind of already did where to shop for Lolita, but, um, how to make coordinates and stuff like that. So, you know, just fun little things for beginners. And then topics that I think need to be talked about for, you know, Lolitas that have been kind of doing it for a while and are kind of ticked off about some stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so today's thing is called Don't Be That Person. And what I mean by don't be that person is don't be that person that sees a new like angelic pretty baby the Star and bright Alice and the Pirates release like on Tumblr or in Cure magazine and then decides to themselves hmm this looks like it's going to be a seller yes I'm going to purchase it on the Japanese site through some sort of service to get it before all the people that can get it from the you know the American website or the international site and then I'm gonna sell it on EGL for way more than it's worth yeah that's what I'm talking about don't be that person um, and I guess I shouldn't be as upset about this as I kinda am but um, this past week actually um, as if you keep up with Angelic Pretty releases, Romantic Rose Letter came out. And, well, I was actually thinking I might be able to purchase that one. I was thinking about setting some money aside for when, like, released. And, um, waiting for it to get onto the American website so I can buy it and then get here quickly. Well, that was silly of me to think because, yet again, like, what happens with most releases that get publicized on the internet ended up being completely sold out within a few days. Everything. Mm. No, no OP, no jumper skirt, no other jumper skirt, no skirt, nothing. And you know, I understand it's a limited supply. Like, I mean, that makes sense. That's the way they get you to actually be willing to purchase it at that price um, and for them to be able to supply not limited supply but some people purchase multiple of the same thing and then the, like and they know they don't kind they don't really want it they just kind of want to try it out you know try out the three hundred dollar dress and then when they don't like it, they're like, oh, well, it's new, so I can sell it on EGL for more than the regular price, plus have really high shipping and PayPal fees. And it's just like, what kind of person are you? You know, when I think about things where there's a limited supply, and you know in advance what sort of outfits are going to be released. You go and you look at everything. You see what's going to be coming out. And you think to yourself, you're like, hmm, do I really need that right now? Do I really want it? Does it resonate with me in some great way? And if it doesn't, leave it alone. Don't buy it because the girl next to you is going to really want it and saved up money for it and now can't get it. So, and honestly to me, it baffles me how many people go and purchase these dresses knowing there's a limited supply and then a bunch of people would want it and then have the nerve to sell it for more than it's worth on EGL. And it's happened with so many different dresses. Like, 
sometimes I go on EGL just to see what's sort of, um, you know, being sold. What's well, not like the it dress anymore and then maybe I'll like allocate money to possibly purchasing it in the future. And, that, and then I go and I see like my dream dresses. The dresses I can't purchase because when they're released, they get sold out immediately. Yeah, I'm looking at you people that bought like Holy Lantern and the Misty Sky re-release and then sold it online for way more. I'm looking at you. And I see them and I'm just like, $400, $500? And then you have the nerve not to give me the free shipping, like having the shipping included in that price? No. It's just rude. And I don't know if anyone else finds that really rude, but personally, I find it incredibly rude and honestly, kind of pickpocketing and taking advantage of the situation of there being way more Lolitas than there are garments. And it's just, why? Like, I understand it's tough times and people need to make money and I understand when people are like selling clothes that they don't need anymore. I think that's really cool. I have no problem with EGL. But like when it's a really old, like it's a dress that didn't just come out and they just need the money for whatever reason it is and then they sell it. I'm cool with that. You people that do that are cool because I think it's really nice when you actually put the dress back into the market for even if it's just at the price it was originally or lower, I think that's cool. I'm talking about the people that mark it up and they buy it with the intent of selling it or they buy it with the intent to try it on and then sell it. And it's just, I can't wrap my mind around it and I've been trying to make sense of it ever since like I've gotten into Lolita and have thought to myself, I could possibly own this dress that's going to be coming out soon. Um, and then like I talked to my mom about maybe giving me money sooner for my grades and whatnot. Or I talked to my boyfriend and like get really excited about it with him. And then I can't get the dress because it sells out unreasonably fast. And you know there are the dresses that do make it through and end up being there like on the US website and the Japanese website way after the release. And I, I've come to think to myself, I'm like, are these the only dresses I'm going to be ever available to purchase? These dresses that no one else felt were worth buying and then overpricing? That makes me kind of sad inside because I don't have to settle for these reject dresses just because the dress I really, really want is being sold for $500. Now, thinking about it, I really do like some of the dresses that are on the American website currently. Um, they're just not the ones that I would put on my dream dress list, like Romantic Rose Letter, or Lily Lantern, or Misty Sky. And I know a lot of people also really like those dresses and I know uh, for the most part I'm hoping a lot of the reasons why it sold out so quickly was because girls have in the past have noticed that these dresses have sold out unreasonably quickly and the only way they can get their hands on this dress that they feel is like worth like the world to them or worth that amount of money to them is to go through some sort of like like Taobao, Spree, or some sort of shopping service and get it off of the Japanese website because they know they're not going to get any quicker. And I can understand that issue. And I can understand girls that do that. And I can understand why the system happens in the first place. I mean, it's not their fault that the only way that they feel like they can get their hands on this dress is to take the sort of back route about it. I mean, it's the people that go with the intent, like these people 
that no one should be the, the unreasonably minded people that go and they buy it and then oversell it on EGL or wherever else they're selling it. It's just, it's like people get sucked into this little loop of, I need the dress, I need the dress, I need the dress. The only way I could get this dress is by swamping the Japanese website whenever, whenever like it gets released and then no one else can have it. And then it's just like sort of a free for all going on. Just uh, every Lolita for his or herself. It's just, why can't we stop that? Why can't we go back to the idea that it's just, when it gets released on the Japanese website, maybe the reason why they have a Japanese and then a U.S. international website is because the Japanese website is for the people in Japan? Can we just let them buy the product there first and then what doesn't sell gets released on the site for everybody else? I mean, it doesn't seem that unreasonable to me and I'm fine with working with that idea. Mainly because it costs way more to get a shopping service and get it off of the Japanese website. I mean, it's a dress. And I know for a lot of people, it's not just a dress. And it's worth that money to them. But in the long run, if it means that other Lolitas can get the dresses that they want, when they want it, and don't have to sort of like push and shove each other to get it, I think that'd be worth it. I don't know what you guys think about it. Uh, I guess comment below what you think. But that's just my idea about it and how I feel about the whole people being meanies and taking stuff and turning it over for profit. Because it's also ripping off the company. I think, um, I'm not a big fan of corporations in general, but I mean, you're ripping off a company when you go in and buy a product just to turn it over and sell it to someone else for more. Um, so you're being an asshole, excuse my language, <laughs> I've been trying to hold that back, but um, it's not, it wasn't going to work. You're, you're just being a big asshole to everyone involved in the Lolita community, from the distributor to the consumer. And as a consumer and as a Lolita, I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like people that do that thing that you do. And I wanted to stop because it's not fair to me, and it's not fair to anyone else, and that's not how I work. So, I guess that just about wraps up my whole um, anger fest about um, what I've been saying over and over again, those people that buy a dress when it gets released just to flip it over for profit for themselves and be a greedy little pig. Um, so that's all about what I had to say. Um, I will be doing a review of um, some wigs I got off of um, Store Envy sometime. I don't know if I'm going to do them today or later this weekend or just sometime next week. But that will be up next. Um, I'm not sure what Lolita Problems video I'll be doing next, but um, if anyone has any suggestions, uh, like things that are really on their mind and they want to be talked about, uh, leave me a comment down below or message me on my Tumblr, which is Sundra Standalion. Uh, I have it linked to my YouTube channel now. If you go next to the Google Plus thing that they make you have there, it should be like right next to it and like it's a blank invisible thing, but if you scroll over and click it, it should work. Um, so yeah, uh, 
I haven't made a lineup for any of my other stuff, so I know I have a gist of what I'm going to be doing. It's just kind of a big wibbly wobbly tiny whiny thing right now. Uh, eventually I'll make a list of what people would like to see or what I would it be easier for me to film in order. Um, any help from you guys would be great because there's like 21 of you out there now. Bye. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm Coda and I just had a big rant so I need to go pull that off and uh, please subscribe because that's what people say at the end of their videos. <laughs> Bye!